Good morning, I'm Patrick Gilmore, and this is our Morning Reflection. A reading from the Song of Songs. Hark, my lover, here he comes, springing across the mountains, leaping across the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Here he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through our lattices. My lover speaks, he says to me, arise my beloved, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. For see, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time for pruning the vines has come, and the song of the dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines in bloom give forth fragrance. Arise, my beloved, my beautiful one, and come. O oh, my dove in the clefts of the rock, in the secret recesses of the cliff, let me see you, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and you are lovely. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Exult, you just in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp, with the ten-string lyre, chant his praises. Sing to him a new song. Pluck the string skillfully with shouts and gladness. Exult you just in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. But the plan of the Lord stands forever, the design of his heart through all generations. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. Exult, you just in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Our soul waits for our Lord, who is our help and our shield. For in him our hearts rejoice. In his holy name we trust. Exult, you just in the Lord. Sing to him a new song. My friends, today's gospel is from Luke. Mary set out in those days and traveled to the hill country in haste, to the town, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Many ways. I think about this gospel in terms of, um, you know, Mary is visiting Elizabeth and they are uh, delighted by the fact that they've been chosen by God for a very special purpose. And so they come together knowing that um, they said yes to God. And in my comments uh, on Sunday, I alluded to pretty much the same thing, that uh, when I read uh, the story, particularly of, the, uh, of Mary, the Blessed Mother, and the angel Gabriel going to her and saying, uh, you, you have been chosen by the Lord for a very special purpose, and Mary says yes. She was deeply troubled, she was a little afraid, but she's willing to put her life on the line for Almighty God in terms of bringing universal salvation to the world. And I always, again, like I said on Sunday, I think about myself. I think about what is called, what, what I've been called to in terms of my vocation. Some of you are saying, well, yes, Father, you're a priest, that's a vocation, that's your calling in life. And I've always had an issue with the word calling because people tend to say the same thing um, to me all the time, you know, well, you're calling or you're called. We're all called. We're all called. I think it's been attached 
to the priesthood in some ways, um, some unfortunate ways. I know people who are firemen and policemen and physicians and nurses and all sorts of other people who we lump together today and call first responders. And I have to tell you that knowing those people, having spoken with them, being my friends, they are also called because I know what some of them have done privately over my 40 years in the priesthood. I've known plenty of these people. And let me tell you something, if what they've done in life is not a calling, then I don't know what is because they have responded and continue to respond to people in the worst moments of their lives. One thing about the priesthood is you get called into the intimacy of end of life situations. And so do all of them. We are all responders in some of the most dire moments in people's lives. And that, my friends, is a calling. Because if you are not up to that, and if you can't do that, then get out of that particular calling, because it will never work. It's a very, very specific kind of response. Mary and Elizabeth uh, were called, and they responded. They were willing to put their ambitions, their lives, their dreams kind of out of the way, so they could be messengers of God's love for us by bringing into the world Jesus Christ, John the Baptist. And so my friends, I would say to all of you um, to look into your own hearts this week, most especially because it is the week of Christ coming into the world at what you may be called to do. For those of you who are parents, piece of cake. You have a calling, believe me. You have a calling and raising children these days in this world is a very special kind of calling because it requires all of you to sacrifice and to put in front of you and on their shoulders all the love that you can muster. So that again is a calling indeed and one of the most precious and wonderful in the whole world. But again, you know, as with all callings, it has to come from the heart. It's not something you learn in a book you may know all the details and you may read books on being a good fireman, being a good policeman, being a good nurse or doctor, being a good priest, and being a good parent, but book learning and wisdom is not enough. Most essential ingredient is love. And where does that come from? It comes from Almighty God. That's the God stuff you got in here. So my friends, heed the calling that all of us are heir to and continue the good work begun in you by God from the day you were born. Mary and Elizabeth most certainly did. If not for them, where would we be? If not for you and I, where will the world be? Heed the calling. Do the good that God has placed within you. Be the best first responder you can in time of crisis and know that all the gifts that you may need were there from birth. Use them wisely to build God's kingdom. Take care, my friends, and God bless you. And now, my friends, as we have shared the word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion. Friends, we now invite you to spend some time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle. We usually uh, follow up my reflections and my, um, my gospel reflections with this time. And uh, so often I will say to you, uh, pray and reflect on a psalm or on some of the words of the gospel, something Jesus says or a parable. This is a great time to do that. And so join me now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And my friends, as you spend time before the Lord, may he bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy these moments of private prayer and reflection.